Welcome to the the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you introduce today's guest and maybe uh, what we're going to be talking about today? This one's going to be good. I like sports, you like sports, and uh, one of the two of us was good enough to play at a decent level. I never was, you were, but we've got someone who's one above you, Sean. We're a performer pro. So I don't want you to feel kind of intimidated or anything like that. That's where I'm going to leave it. But my good friend Milovan actually played in the Serbian Premier League. So, you know, not semi-pro tennis, Premier League. And here he scored goals. Um, from, my, from my recollection, his stats are, you know, he's not got like tons of goals. He's more of a midfielder. He's more of like a safety player. He wants to make sure you win the game. He tackles people. He passes the ball. He's a team player. So that's what I know about him. And it's, it's a good time to have him on the show. So, buddy, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Hey, it was a pleasure to meet you guys. A pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, the usual, I'm so blessed, but I really am because I enjoy doing this. And uh, we both of you guys. And then sports is uh, a passion of mine. Speaking of sports, I actually had a mishap on Monday playing indoor five-a-side. And I managed to break my toe. So uh, we're doing this while I have a broken toe. <laughs> it is what it is, you know. <laughs> that's, that's sports for you. But did you win the game? Uh, it would it would sound a lot better if I said yes, but no. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll pretend it was a draw. Nothing went wrong there. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's, it's good stuff, good. sir. Good, good to have you on. So, um, well, we know you used to play professional football or, or soccer, if I have to say the S word. Um, so I, I know your story, but Sean and the listeners don't. So give us the like one or two minutes on soccer player to tech BDR and beyond. Oh my God! Eh? Anyway, so uh, played uh, Red Star Belgrade uh, youth. Uh, uh, played for the national team in Serbia. Then I ended up going uh, be- between playing professional in Serbia or going to college. I actually picked to go to college in the states. I got scouted while playing for the national team. Uh, went to UVA. Uh, after college, I thought I uh, I wanted to be messy, which obviously failed miserably for me, specifically not for him. Um, so I went back to Europe, played some professional football. Um, I was an entrepreneur in the meantime while I was playing. I started um, a business, sold that business. But anyways, uh, afterwards, I, after I finished my football career, I ended up in diplomacy. So I was for two years an executive director of the Atlantic Council, which my job was basically selling NATO to Serbians. So look, if you can manage to do that, I think that you can probably sell just about anything. Uh, and after after that, I actually again get got headhunted to for a comp- tech company that uh, based out of SF that ended up being in the moving and relocation space. I was there for six something years, basically uh, led uh, the sales and uh, sales and operations in Serbia, hired, trained, all that stuff. Grew the company to like or whatever, had two hundred people something, and uh, I decided, you know, it's now time for me to uh, do my own thing. So um, yeah, <laughs> here I am doing my own thing now. <laughs> That's about it. But I, hopefully, that was succinct enough. So one thing I noticed in, in, you know, entrepreneurs and especially people that played competitive sports, cause I was, you know, funny enough, you said it, I actually had to choose between tennis and, um, doing my MBA, um, when I was playing semi-professional tennis back in the day. Uh, you know, one thing I look at is always competitiveness is the reason, one of the reasons why you went into sales and went into entrepreneurship is because you're, have that competitive, you like that win loss, you love that adrenaline, or was it another reason like your parents were in entrepreneurship or, or how did you get into that? Actually, it's both of those. So my dad is an entrepreneur through and through, like through and through. Uh, couldn't be, you know, couldn't be happier with the family that I was born into, with what they taught me. I was, I was growing up, even with everything that was happening, but in Serbia in the 90s and whatever, um, their childhood, let's not get into the sad story, but like everything I went through, um, you know, uh, playing professional sports, I, I, I enjoy competing. And every single call, because I was a telemarketer, a BDR, whatever you want to call it, right? 
Uh, and I enjoyed being the one in my mind winning by scheduling a demo, booking whatever I thought I won. So for me, I kind of drew a parallel to sports. Oh, oh my God, I won. Oh, I lost. It's fine. We go again. So it's, a, it's both of those things, honestly. So maybe, maybe just, you know, tell the audience. So what's the, what's the current business right now? What is, what exactly do you do and what does your company do? Yeah. So drive sales, uh, I've been working on it for a bit now. So we built a CRM specifically for moving companies globally. So anybody who owns or runs a moving company, a shipping company, you know, it doesn't really matter where it's located. They can use our CRM to run their own business. So like a HubSpot for movers or whatever, Salesforce, doesn't really matter, right? Specifically tailored to them with all the needs and requirements. It sounds, the business and the industry sounds super simple, but there's so many nuances there that it's very hard to get like something very decent off the shelf. And outside of that, like a software platform, we do offer services. Like we offer sales as a service to moving companies. So basically we become a part of their sales team and we sell on their behalf to their clients. So kind of like an outsourced sales team that we also have going on outside of the CRM that we're working on. So I know you, um, it's probably a $3 million company already. That's the way that you do things. Um, but you know SaaS and, and sales tech and that kind of market. What surprised you when you started this up? Surely there was something that just crept up on you that you couldn't have prepared for. Oh my God. I, I, I'm not sure I should say, say this out loud. But I never specifically led building a product. And all the things that go into building and managing a product, including the dev team and uh, product management and design and all, I never built it specifically. That was, It's still super painful not to say anything else it's super painful and it's just like it's one of those things like oh my god if i knew this when i started i would have <laughs> thought this through a little bit further so who were i guess who are some of the, the the first important hires that you did when you started the company and i guess how did you also get those first clients um, within the business sales for me it's sales i i i believe thoroughly that every company runs on sales you know, whether you say product-led growth, whether, whatever you say, marketing, a demand gen, dark, whatever you want, dark social, whatever term you want to use, that's what really matters to me. Sales drives companies. And then if you're looking to grow, I'm, I'm focused on a sales-led uh, company, obviously. And the people I used to work with were some of the people that decided that they wanted to take a shot and start with me on this entrepreneurship journey. And as we don't have any funds in terms of outside investment, everything is bootstrapped. So, you know, they decided to take a chance and roll with me. So that's how we started, but basically sales. I got something I've, I've never asked in this podcast. That, that's a surprise. Normally we just ask fairly similar things. But if you're, if you're global, um, and I know that you've worked a bit in Europe and a bit in the States, um, how much of the client base is outside of that? And what is it like? So let's say you might have someone in Brazil randomly because you're literally global. And then all of a sudden you've got different time zone for support hours and all of those things. There's all of these different things which come with being global. And uh, I wonder what that's like to deal with. So any surprises so far? Oh, it's a nightmare generally. It's a nightmare, especially if you don't have the backing in terms of people who know everything that's going on. So for example, I'm clients in the UK. I have clients in the US. Uh, our clients are across the globe and then you have to know the terms and conditions and regulations in every single country. So you have to figure out in terms of all privacy policy and all that good stuff. You have to figure out that you're not ma making any mistakes or wrong steps as you build the company because the foundation that you set it on is super, super important not to, you know, not to have your rug pulled under you, uh, for something that you, you didn't even know existed. So, a bunch of things popped up to pop up, but like it's also important that you know who to ask to get help, um, you know, to be able to solve the problems that you kind of you can't deal with, and they will pop up. They pop up daily. I'm dealing with lawyers right now, and you know they will pop up, and it's fine. You know, so maybe let's go. You know, 
while you're growing your business, what are some of the early mistakes? I know everyone says we have tons of mistakes. You know, we're still making mistakes. What are some of the early mistakes that you feel that you look back like, you know what? I wish I did this differently. If we are talking about, let's say, how how the setup of the people and processes work right now, I all I believe that, for example, in the last month, I knew exactly what's going to happen in terms of the demand. I prepped for it, but I actually didn't prep enough. I talked about prep. I did some prep, but I haven't done 100% foolproof. I'm done, sorted out. It's all done. So it's one of those things that, you know, I knew what's going to happen. <laughs> I saw it coming. It did come. And then uh, because other things took my attention, I wasn't at 100% prepped to deal with it. Um, and the pain was felt, not just by me, but uh, by other people uh, in the company by having to pull more hours than we really should have if we set a bunch of things up properly. Um, there was something you mentioned at the beginning. Um, so you said you're, you're HubSpot and Salesforce, but for your market only. Um, I, I wonder, like, what are the competitors like? Are there competitors that do exactly what you do only? Because I'm picturing... Um, what is it like for you to sell? So are you going up against a big company who's already established and you're kind of picking their clients away from them or are you always hearing this objection? But what, what about this company? How do you compare to their price? Or are you the first people in the company, or the first people in the market? Are you the trailblazers or what, what's it like? Because CRM is very busy, but in a certain mm -hmm. market, it may not be. I love the question, and no, I'm not a trailblazer. I would have been if I, when this idea came to mind, was acted on, I would have been, but I'm not. Now, I'm dealing with a company, for example, one of my competitors, uh, they got a 40-something million dollar investment a couple of months back. Uh, I also have a company that has 18 million invested two years ago. Uh, there's a, there, there is, there is competition, but not, it's not necessarily that they do everything that I do or uh, we do everything that they do. There are some nuances. The thing is, my, I, I truly believe that how you deal with those people that give you a shot will set you apart, especially since I have like sales and other things going on. If, if we are able to make sure they are happy, there is no reason for them to even think about going to different places while other places, I am not so sure because they got so big. I'm not sure what their customer experience, not necessarily customer experience, but like retention policies and what they do to keep the clients in check to make sure that they are happy as well. So I do, I do go against like very well-funded companies but I am not scared in the slightest. Uh, I actually enjoy being the underdog. So, yeah. Well, I uh, I agree with you because one thing I do remember is even when I started my my first and my in both my businesses, um, there was already competitors out there that were already doing a lot of money. But the markets are so big that you can mm -hmm. definitely um, steal some of that market share. So one question I do have for you, and then we'll probably have to end the uh, episode, but, um, you know, going into 2023, you know, we hear the word recession going on. We hear, we see a lot of layoffs going on in the tech world. How are you guys handling it? And are you guys kind of changing things that you've done the last few years? Are you on a hiring freeze? Are you hiring? Um, are you trying to lower your costs? Are you trying to become profitable? Like what's changing in your world now that we are kind of, potentially in a mild recession going into one or maybe not even having one? Like, have you guys changed your business model at all over the last few years coming into this? Yeah. I, yeah. I love how all of us, including myself, keep uh, you know talking about recession, no recession, mild recession, because no one knows what's, what's coming around the pike, you know? Exactly. And uh, yeah. And the, the thing is we have, we added bodies to our team actually. Um, we hired, we are still looking for exceptional talent and then we are always looking for exceptional talent because at the end of the day, now I believe that the uh, landscape for hiring people will be super competitive. You will be able to lower rates to get people a job, which I don't necessarily think I want to do. 
My, my main thing is I want to make sure that my people are happy because at the end of the day, this business doesn't work without them. And as I hire good people, I want to make sure they're happy and to make, to make sure, and they won't always be happy. Let's put like, they won't, I will, I'll piss some people off. I won't piss some people off. And it, you know, it happens, but I'm trying to make sure that the team is generally overall happy and that we add people to keep it fresh. And then in terms of hiring freezes or not, we haven't done that. We have been growing for a bit now. And um, I'm honestly excited about growing further uh, in the next couple of months, really. And we saw all the tech layoffs that have been going on. And I'm excited that hopefully I can take some of the talent uh, and to work with me because, yeah. you know, why not? Well, let's... Uh... Let's uh, let's wrap things up. But before we do, I do have a, a few questions. How do you self educate yourself? Do you listen to any podcasts? Do you read any books? And uh, and maybe just let the audience know where they can find you. Yeah. So in ter- uh, what I generally do, I talk to customers all the time. I know that sounds super cliche. I'm literally on the phone whenever I can with the people that may use me or may not use me or are using my services. Anyway. You can find me on LinkedIn, Milovan Drive Sales. And that's one of the only social media that I'm active on, really. Uh, the rest I'm trying to kind of avoid. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Perfect. And, I, and I'm sure we can see videos of you playing uh, football, soccer on YouTube as well. So uh, I want to thank you, you so can. much for joining us today. <laughs> this has been an absolute blast. And also, I want to thank the audience for listening today and, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, If you did enjoy the show, make sure you give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show. See you soon. And uh, Milovan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate you.